I'm pleased to be joined now by Kevin Pilar, Braves outfielder, 11 year Major League Baseball veteran. Kevin, how are you? Good to see you. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Listen, it's been a great year so far with the Braves. You guys are playing out of your mind. Best record in baseball right now. But what's it like playing with so many of the game's young stars? Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting. It, 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 it's a nice way to make me uh, feel young, keeps me young. Uh, but the game's in such a good place with so many young players. Uh, Braves have so many of them. That guy you're just showing right there, that guy, that guy. Uh, just special, special talent. It's fun to show up to the field every day and watch these guys compete and play. Now, you know, you called yourself the old guy. Now, I remember when you were kind of a young guy back with those Blue Jays teams a few years back in 2015 and 2016 with Batista and Encarnacion and Donaldson. How does this Braves team compare to those Blue Jays teams back in the day? Yeah, it's funny. I was I was actually asked that the other day. Um, you know, this team's uh, one of the most dynamic offenses is I, I've been on, one of the most complete teams I've been on. Uh, the biggest difference to me compared to the 2015 uh, Toronto Blue Jays team is uh, I think the Braves one's a little bit more dynamic and the ability to to run the bases and steal bases. You know, obviously when you have a guy like uh, Ronald Acuna lean off games with his 51 stolen bases, uh, he's a game changer. And you've got Ozzy and some other guys that can really run Mike Harris at the bottom of the lineup. So I think it's a little bit more dynamic. I think the 2015 team was a little bit more reliant on the long ball um, and the extra base hit. This team's a little bit more dynamic. Yeah, certainly a little bit of a difference there, and the rule changes playing into some of that as well. Now, your teammates, Ronald Acuna Jr. and Matt Olson, are certainly leading in the NL MVP race. I'm going to put you on the spot. Who's more valuable? Oh, wow. I mean, I, that would make me a terrible teammate if I pick. <laughs> um, they, they're both just, they're both just uh, you know, unique special players in this game uh i think obviously you look at the offensive statistics with both of them and that's a reason they're you know front runners for the mvp but they're both exceptional defenders uh matt saves our infielders so many times uh with, with his ability to, to make big scoops and leave the base and make tags and, and ronnie's showing uh, his ability to be a gold glover a perennial gold glover in the outfield has the ability to change the game with his arm, with his legs in the outfield, and has made some unbelievable catches this year. So um, right now I got them, uh, you know, both uh, you know, with a legitimate chance to be MVPs in the National League. They really do. And in fact, a chance to be 1-2 in the voting, it certainly seems. All right, so this year there's something about this Braves team. The first inning, you guys dominate. How aware are you guys as to how prolific you really are in the first inning? And why do you think you guys are so successful early in the game? I mean, look at the guy leading off every game for us. Um, he, he's pretty dynamic. Uh, you know, he has the ability to, you know, hit a home run first pitch of the game. He's got the – and he's shown unbelievable ability to, to take his walks this year. He, he's really cut down on his strikeouts as well. So, you know, when you got a guy like him leading off, uh, whether he puts one run up by himself or he gets on first base and has the ability to steal uh, second and third, and then, you know, you got a guy – Ozzy hitting behind him, who's probably second or third in the National League in RBIs, too. Um, it's just a really dynamic top of the lineup. So uh, it's, it's probably a nightmare for opposing pitchers to face. Uh, you know, hopefully tonight's one of those nights where we could put up a couple runs in the first inning as well. You know, Kevin, you, you know, Brian Snicker's lineup, he tends to write out that same lineup quite frequently. For you, being a guy who is a role player that can fit in on a certain matchup on a given day, what do you do to stay prepared so that you're ready when you do get your name in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been challenging. You know, I've been a guy who's mostly played every day in my career. Um, coming here, I knew what the assignment was. Um, and it's just... I've fallen victim to the schedule. You know, we can't afford left-handed pitchers or, you know, favorable right-handed matches for me. So there's been some times where, uh, you know, maybe I go five, six, seven, eight days without that bat and then have to go out and face a guy like Justin Steele the other night. But, you know, I do everything in my power to stay ready. I, may, I don't make excuses. I go out, take DP every day. I shag my position every day. And I just try to get a lot of uh, work off the machine. But uh, nothing kind of recreates the feeling of being in the box and facing a human being, you know, with the change of speeds and not knowing what pitch is coming, command, all that stuff. So it's been a little bit challenging for me this year. Uh, I embrace the challenge and uh, I feel like I need to be better uh, at, at my role 
and I'm working hard every day to, to be prepared for my, when my number's called. Now, I'm sure you saw the other day, Angels outfielder Taylor Ward got hit in the face with a pitch. Uh, and going back a few years, Alec, you know, you got hit yourself with a pitch. When you think back and saw what happened to Ward, can you tell us a little bit about what he's facing moving forward and what you went through? Yeah, you know, it's uh, ironic. I was uh, in the video room. That game was on. Uh, bases loaded, so my, my attention was on the game and and saw so it happen in real time. And uh, you know, we definitely had flashbacks to my own uh, you know injury. Um, you know, I was able to. Uh, I haven't ha actually had an opportunity to reach out to him. It's something I need to do. Uh, I know their head trainer over there really well. Spent a lot of time with him in Toronto. Uh, just need to check in on him. You know, definitely. Uh, Thinking about him, need to reach out to him, but it's, uh, you know, everyone's going to face it a little bit differently. You know, me, uh, you know, once the doctor told me that it was, you know, nasal fractures and that I could return to play and, you know, 10 days post-surgery, uh, that's where my mind was at, getting back on the field and playing as soon as possible. I tried to remind myself that I've been playing this game since I was a little kid, um, never been hit in the face, you know, had maybe a couple – uh, shots off the helmet, but I just try to remind myself that I've played this game a long time. I've stood in the box without fear for a long time. Uh, I wasn't going to let that, uh, you know, one incident, you know, change my, my thought process. And I felt like as soon as I could get back in the box, it was going to be beneficial for me, you know, for my teammates, uh, and just try to put it behind me. Well, you certainly are one of the game's toughest players. I've seen you run into, crash into walls, obviously getting hit in the face there, and you just keep getting up and playing. Thanks so much for giving us time and certainly give us your perspective on what Taylor Ward's going through as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, I definitely need to reach out to him, see how he's doing, uh, let him know I'm here for him. You know, maybe he's watching uh, at home. But thinking about you, uh, get back in the box as soon as possible, put it behind you. Uh, and remember, you've been playing this game a long time. Uh, it's part of the game. It's a scary part of the game, but it's something that doesn't happen very often. And I think the more you can uh, remind yourself of that, uh, you could put it behind you. Uh, Kevin, thanks so much. Really do appreciate it.